welcome back to my channel. So as you can see, we are not on the Rocky Mountaineer today. Um, unfortunately, due to the wildfires in BC, we are not able to go on the rails in between Vancouver and Kamloops. So we are being bused. So we are currently here at Britton Creek, which is a rest area on the Coquihalla Highway. And uh, in about two hours time, we'll be in Kamloops with some free time. And uh, tomorrow we're actually going to be boarding the Rocky Mountaineer to go from Kamloops to Banff. So just thought I'd kind of come on here and explain why you're not seeing me on a train right now. <laughs> so we'll catch you guys up when we get to Kamloops. See you later. The Rocky Mountaineer typically departs from their own station downtown Vancouver. I was on Rocky Mountaineer's first passage to the west, which travels from Vancouver to Banff. The night before we were set to depart, we made our way to their guest services center, which was held at the Sheraton Wall Center in Vancouver, to check in and do our complimentary and required antigen COVID tests. This was a very quick process and we had our results within 15 minutes. We also heard the bad news that the rails were still closed due to the fires and we were given an updated schedule for our first day from Vancouver to Kamloops. The next morning we were driven to the Rocky Mountaineer station, we dropped off our luggage and took a shuttle to the Fairmont Hotel Vancouver for an included breakfast before we boarded our buses to Kamloops. Rocky Mountaineer hosts were on board our bus pointing out a few of the points of interest along the way. We stopped at the Britton Creek rest stop and were given a snack bag with some refreshments before continuing on to the Delta Hotel by Marriott in Kamloops. Good morning everyone! So obviously I didn't vlog yesterday afternoon. Uh, we did check in to the Delta by Marriott Hotel here in Kamloops. Uh, when we arrived, it was about 2 o'clock, 2.30. We basically had lunch right away, which was absolutely delicious. And then we came up to the room. We did get changed and then we tried to go for a walk, but it was just way too smoky here in Kamloops. So really sad to see um, all the wildfires here in BC kind of affecting everything. Um, but yeah, we're now all packed up. We're ready to go downstairs. It's about quarter to six in the morning here in, uh, like I said, in Kamloops, and um, we're about ready to get on board the Gold Leaf Rocky Mountaineer train, so stay tuned! The Rocky Mountaineer includes luggage service, which means when you get to your hotel, your luggage is waiting for you in the room, and you leave your luggage in the room at your Midpoint Hotel for them to take it to your next stop along your journey. We were shuttled from our hotel to Rocky Mountaineer's rail yard to board our train to Banff. You board your bus based on your rail car number, so your bus lines up exactly with your rail car you'll be traveling in. The Rocky Mountaineer Gold Leaf Rail Car features on the lower level outdoor viewing vestibule, a dining area, two washrooms, and business class seating in the domed area up above. The seats are fully automated and each guest has their own controls for heat, recline, lumbar support, and leg rest. Also features power outlets to charge devices and a tray table. In the welcome aboard package, you will find a drink menu, gratuity envelope for service recognition, souvenir catalog, the RM magazine, and the mob post which is a great guide you can follow along using the rail markers along your journey. Soon after boarding and a safety briefing, we were on our way.
as well as the one hidden directly behind you. And I'm working alongside your fantastic team here who are going to take very good care of you over the next uh, a few hours today. Kyle, we can see a beaver lodge on one of the pilings of this bridge. It looks like it's below the waterline today, but uh, its resident has become something of a mascot for Rocky Mountain here. He's named him Justin. That's right, Justin Beaver. We were in the first seating for breakfast, so we went downstairs to the dining area of our train car. We started off with a fresh smoothie and a croissant, followed by the Eggs Benedict. The food on board Rocky Mountaineer Washrooms on board the train are kept immaculate and are well appointed. It's also so nice to see so many people waving to the train as it passes by. You can't help but to wave back. shores of Shushwap Lake in one of our first tunnels on our trip. The dining area on our gold leaf car was very comfortable and was set up with partitions for proper social distancing. You were seated with your traveling party only, or you could dine with others if you wished. The culinary team were fantastic and did an amazing job of all the meals and snacks on board. Governments that 
Within 10 years of his rise to power over Canada, he would complete a link by a rail to the West Coast. And so they put together the Canadian Pacific Railway Syndicate. Loads of rich investors, including two cousins from Scotland, Craigalachie is an important landmark along these rails as it's where the last spike was driven in to join the eastern and western railways together. The actual spot is marked by a stone pyramid marker and some of the original rails still remain. As a virtuoso travel advisor, my clients receive added benefits when booking vacations such as the Rocky Mountaineer through myself. I'd love to work with you as your travel advisor. You can contact me using the link in the description box down below. Crossing over the Columbia River, we entered into Revelstoke. I actually used to live here and saw the Rocky Mountaineer passing through all the time. I always knew that I would one day be on that train and I've been lucky enough to have experienced this journey now twice. Revelstoke, it was time for lunch. We started off with some bread, marinated olives, mushrooms, and a delicious red pepper dip. I had the steak that was served with a chimichurri sauce, broccolini, potatoes, and carrots. I also tried the herb risotto, which was really lovely.
dessert was a trio of chocolate, which I enjoyed with a coffee and Baileys. Crossing over the Stony Creek Trestle, we had an amazing view of the waterfall. In 1885, this trestle was originally built out of wood and was the highest timber bridge ever built. It was rebuilt in 1894 using steel and is 82 meters or 270 feet high above the ravine below and the trestle is 148 meters or 486 feet in length. Make sure you take in these views from the outdoor vestibule. I did catch my grandmother who I brought along with me napping just before we got to Golden where the skies finally started to break from the smoke that we had for most of our journey up to this point. We made our way up the Kicking Horse Canyon along the Kicking Horse Creek which offered some amazing photo opportunities to catch the engines up ahead.
This part of the Trans-Canada Highway was known as one of the most deadliest because of the grade, sheer drops, and being only two lanes with blind switchbacks. They straightened out a portion of it by building a large bridge, which is the same height as the Stony Creek Trestle, to give you some context of how high that trestle was that we crossed over earlier. At this point of the journey, we have now entered the national parks, with this one being Yoho National Park. The scenery is absolutely breathtaking. After passing through field, we travel through the historic spiral tunnels. Once we've exited the tunnel, you can actually see where we entered the tunnel down below. It was then time for our last snack of the trip, a wine and cheese pairing. Hi friends! So we are still here on the Rocky Mountain Mirror. I am here on the outdoor vestibule and we're just stopped here in Lake Louise. Uh, we're letting some passengers off and we're just waiting for another train to pass before we continue on our journey to Banff. So we will see you guys there. Bye! The views as we neared Banff are so picturesque. The mountains and bright blue waters were just stunning.
Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is the end of this part of the adventure and the journey. We thank you so much for riding with us. We know that there are so many things you can do with your time and your energy, and you chose to spend them with us here on the Rocky Mountaineer, and that really means a lot to us. We know that there are so many places to visit within our own country, and it's absolutely our pleasure to share British Columbia's backyard with the uh, with all of us Canadians here. So it just allows us to look at it differently. Now, we do see these views quite often, uh, but they never do get old. But one of the things that actually makes it just a little extra special each time is we share it with different people every time. Are you crying? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Who's your favorite? We've had, a, we've had a wonderful time. We know each of us has had a chance to speak to every single one of you and get to know a little bit about you and where you're from and what brings you here. And that is what makes our job so fulfilling and so much fun. So thank you so much for joining us. And uh, bon voyage until we meet again. Gina and Rob, who are our hosts on board, did an amazing job and it was definitely a difficult goodbye. The Rocky Mountaineer truly is an unforgettable journey. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this vlog highlighting my experience on the Rocky Mountaineer from Vancouver to Banff. Be sure to subscribe, hitting the subscribe button down below. It does help support my channel. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up.